be 29, Bob. It's no out running what's coming. Set against the backdrop of Japan's rich cultural history, the Wolverine delves deep into the complex and tormented world of Logan, one of the most enigmatic figures in Marvel. The 2013 film by James Mangold is not just a high-octane action thriller, it's a poignant examination of immortality, redemption, and the human struggle against the inescapable tide of fate. Very loosely based on the 1982 limited comic series Wolverine by Chris Claremont and Frank Miller, it explores Wolverine's character and his connection to Japan, including his samurai training and his relationship with Mariko Yoshida, his fiancée in the comic and a member of the Yakuza crime family, Clan Yoshida. Like the comic, the film emphasizes themes of honor in the way of the samurai, but it makes significant changes to fit the X-Men film continuity. The trajectory of the X-Men franchise post Brett Ratner's X-Men Last Stand presented a clear challenge for Marvel and Fox in handling the series. Ratner's approach, characterized by a seemingly indiscriminate elimination of major characters, reduction of mutant powers, and a misuse of iconic storylines, significantly deviated from the universe initially crafted by Singer in the first two films. This left the production companies in a predicament, necessitating a delve into the past of the franchise, first manifested in X-Men Origins Wolverine, a film that failed in every conceivable way. I mean, they literally decided to suture Deadpool's lips, something Deadpool 2 hilariously rectified. Hey, it's me, just cleaning up the timelines. However, a notable course correction was achieved with X-Men First Class, which successfully reimagined Professor X's team, offering a refreshing reboot to the series. The Wolverine then brought the narrative back to the present, dealing with the fallout of the catastrophic events in Last Stand for the first time. We see Logan, played with depth and nuance by Hugh Jackman, in a state of self-imposed exile haunted by the spectre of Famke Janssen's Jean Grey, a painful symbol of love lost and difficult choices made. Director James Mangold, along with writers Mark Bomback, Scott Frank and Christopher McQuarrie, perfectly captured the character's ferocity, look, humour and spirit. Distinguished by its engaging storyline, exhilarating action and another stellar performance from Jackman, the film marks a significant improvement and serves as a rejuvenating chapter in the franchise. I'll never hurt anyone ever again. It's too at its heart, The Wolverine is a narrative about a man out of time, grappling with his inner demons and an immortal curse. Logan, played with a potent mix of raw physicality and vulnerability by Hugh Jackman, finds himself in a foreign country, a land steeped in tradition and honor, a stark contrast to his wild, untamed nature. Here his journey becomes more than just a fight for survival, it transforms into a quest for meaning in a life that seems endless. His interactions with the characters he meets in Japan serve as a mirror, reflecting and challenging his beliefs about life, death, and his own nature. Through its fusion of intense action sequences and deeply personal storytelling, Mangold invites viewers to witness the struggle of a man who's both hero and outcast, warrior and protector, seeking redemption in a world where peace seems as elusive as the end of his own immortal journey. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and in this video, we're going to explore the comics it's based on, Logan's journey in the film, the characters, and a review of my thoughts at the end. You're a soldier, and you seek what all soldiers do. And what's that? An honorable death, an end to your pain. In the comics, Mariko's tale is one of love, duty, and tragedy, deeply entwined with Logan's own story. As the daughter of the formidable Japanese crime figure, Lord Shingen, leader of Clan Yoshida, Mariko's life was far from ordinary. Her path crossed with Wolverine when the X-Men sought assistance from her cousin Sunfire. Initially fearful of Logan, she found herself drawn to him, captivated by his contrasting charm and ferocity, and their bond deepened, blossoming into love. However, Mariko's life was steeped in obligation and turmoil. She was coerced into marrying Noburo Hideki, a brutal man and one of her father's criminal associates. Despite suffering abuse at Hideki's hands, Mariko felt bound by duty to her father and refused to leave with Wolverine. This sense of duty was further complicated when Wolverine, drugged and deceived, was challenged to a duel by her father. Here she was horrified to witness Wolverine's brutal nature, leading him to lose his fighting spirit and succumb to defeat. Her turmoil continued as she discovered the extent of her father's criminal activities, 
and disgusted by the dishonor brought upon her family, she resolved to end him. Meanwhile, Wolverine, accompanied by Yukio, found himself embroiled in a deadly confrontation with Katsuyuri, another crime lord. In the ensuing chaos, Mariko returned to her father's stronghold, determined to confront the legacy of crime and corruption. The climax of this family drama saw Hideki attempting to flee with Mariko, using her as leverage, but Yukio intervened, killing him, while Wolverine engaged in a fierce battle with Shinken, ultimately slaying him. These deaths elevated Mariko to the head of Clan Yoshida, before she and Wolverine announced their engagement. But as their wedding neared, Mariko fell under the influence of Mastermind, who manipulated her to break off the engagement and strengthen her clan's criminal ties. Even after regaining control, the shame of her actions under his influence led Mariko to postpone her marriage to Wolverine, feeling the need to rectify her clan's criminal connections. Tragedy struck when Mariko's leadership was challenged by the Hand, led by Matsuo, and her half-brother the Silver Samurai. Despite Wolverine's best efforts to protect her, Mariko was poisoned by Matsuo. Facing a slow and painful death, she chose to ask Wolverine for a merciful end, a request he heartbreakingly fulfilled. In the aftermath, Wolverine sought vengeance against Matsuo, vowing to take a piece from him each year on the anniversary of her death, a promise he upheld until Matsuo's demise. It's because of this that Mariko's story, marked by a struggle between duty and personal desire, her brief moments of happiness with Wolverine and her tragic end, remains a poignant chapter in the Wolverine saga. The film opens in a POW camp near Nagasaki in Japan on August 9, 1945. A young Japanese officer, Yoshida, is perched in a guard tower his eyes widening as a pair of B-29 bombers ominously appear above them. As the air raid sirens pierce the quiet, Yoshida, with a sense of urgency, descends from his tower. While his fellow officers stoically prepare for death, Yoshida decides to unlock cells and free American soldiers in a chaotic but heroic frenzy. Then we encounter a cell that's basically a fortress, looking more like a welded tank turret than a place to keep a man. Inside is none other than Logan, hanging there with his bone claws, an observer to the madness around him. In a moment of bravery, Yoshida frees Logan, urging him to escape, but Wolverine insists that it was safer where he was. We then witness Japanese officers lined up, ready to embrace death through sepulchre. Yoshida is also there, but hesitation grips him, leading Logan to intervene. The bomb drops, Nagasaki is engulfed in flames, and Yoshida finds himself being ushered into the safety of the pit. Here, Logan uses a metal door as a shield over Yoshida, sacrificing himself to the Inferno as the officer witnesses the miraculous, Logan's horrific burns healing in real time. <laughs> it goes without saying that the central character is effectively a mutant with animal keen senses, enhanced physical capabilities, a powerful regenerative healing factor, and three retractable bone claws in each hand. For more on his backstory and powers, check out my video, Wolverine, A History of Violence. Links in the description. Fast forward to the present day, now a man haunted by his past, Logan wakes up from a nightmare in bed with Jean Grey. It's a heart-wrenching moment where Logan's love and pain collide, as he inadvertently harms her in his sleep, calling back to when he was forced to end her in the last stand to protect the world. No! And hard. Jean is essentially a constant reminder of Logan's tragic past and the difficult choices he's had to make, representing his unresolved guilt and pain. When he awakens, we find him in a Yukon cave, the weight of his nightmares and reality bearing down on him. Wolverine has effectively swapped superhero life for a hermit's existence, now rugged, unkempt and living off the grid in a cave decorated with the finest empty whiskey bottles and an old radio on its last legs. Strolling to the nearest town, he casually carves his signature into a tree. En route, he encounters a grizzly bear, and they share a moment that screams Animal Kingdom Buddies. As he heads into town to buy batteries for his radio, he observes a band of hunters who clearly missed the Hunting for Dummies memo, nearly shooting themselves in the process. Logan's expression, pure annoyance. Back at the cave, Logan's slumber is interrupted by distant screams. He discovers the hunter's campsite in shambles, courtesy of a bear attack, and tracking the culprit, he finds his grizzly pal, wounded by an arrow laced with poison, forcing him to end its suffering. Fueled by righteous fury, he storms into town and heads straight to the local bar, where he finds a surviving hunter, spinning a tall tale of narrow escape from the grizzly. Seeing through his lies, he confronts him about the poisoned arrow that turned the bear into a rampaging beast. 
Poison, feeding crazy, killed five people. The hunter plays innocent, but Logan makes his point by pinning the hunter's hand to the table with the very same arrow. His message here is clear. If it's not poisoned, no harm done. He's about to take on the hunter's pals when Yukio, the mysterious redhead samurai sword wielding lady, steps in. With a flair for drama, Yukio introduces her centuries old sword, Dansen, aka the Separator. She dazzles and terrifies the hunters with a swift display of her blade, enough to make them rethink their life choices before taking Logan for a drive. A skilled Japanese mutant with precognitive abilities, Yukio specifically has the power to foresee people's deaths and is characterized by a fierce loyalty and combat prowess, complemented by a vibrant, quirky personality. I wouldn't bother with them. Most of them will die soon anyway. She basically serves as Yashida's bodyguard, but grows to become Logan's ally. Yukio reveals she's a messenger from Yoshida, now an elderly man on his deathbed, who wants to reunite with Loken and thank him for saving his life during World War II. And bound by a sense of duty and honor, he agrees to fly to Tokyo and say goodbye. A lot of guns. There have been attacks. By who? The Yakuza. Upon arrival at Yoshida's luxurious abode, Loken, looking more caveman than superhero, is deemed too gruff for the ailing Yoshida. Cue to an unwilling disinfecting session, where Logan is bathed, shaved and made presentable for polite society, before meeting Yoshida, who's eager to return the favor from 70 years ago. The old man's grand plan, to transfer his life-giving mutation into himself, effectively making Logan mortal. Not exactly thrilled with the idea, Logan plans to bail, but not before witnessing Yoshida's son Shingen in a less than fatherly moment with his daughter, Mariko. His hero instincts kick in, and he saves her from a cliffside leap, before being convinced by Yukio to stay a bit longer. Mariko, Yoshida's granddaughter and the heir to his vast empire is a complex character, caught between her duty to her family and her personal desires. She begins to form a deep connection with Logan, providing a grounding human element to his larger-than-life character, while Mariko's father and Yoshida's son Shingen is deeply resentful of being passed over as the heir to the Yoshida Corporation, portrayed as ambitious and ruthless, willing to go to great lengths to claim what he believes is rightfully his. Who's that? Shingen. He's good. He's alright. As Logan sleeps, he dreams of Jean Grey, but the dream takes a sinister turn as Jean morphs into Dr. Green, Yashida's oncologist, who deposits green vapor into his mouth. Waking up to chaos, Logan steps out to find paramedics swarming the estate. Yashida is dead, Mariko is distraught, and Shingen is hastily planning a funeral. Time for you to go back to your cave. During the traditional ceremony in the heart of Tokyo, Logan, ever the observant outsider, realizes they aren't ordinary priests leading the ceremony. Those arms are more ink than a comic book, screaming Yakuza. As he charges through the crowd like a man on a mission, stirring up a cocktail of confusion and anger from Shingen, Mariko, and her fiancé Noburu, guns are drawn and Logan takes a bullet to the chest. Only this time, something's off and he seems to have been weakened. The Yakuza snatch Mariko and make a run for it, with Logan in hot pursuit. And in the midst of the chaos, arrows fly courtesy of Harada. A skilled archer and leader of the Black Clan, a group of ninjas from the birthplace of Yashida's family, Harada has a complex history with Mariko, and is torn between his feelings for her and his duty to her family. The chase takes Logan and Mariko into the bustling streets of Tokyo and onto a bullet train. Meanwhile, Logan's self-examination in the bathroom is a reality check. He's not healing like he used to. After another confrontation with Yakuza goons, he grills Mariko about her destination to the end of the line, convincing her to slip away into the city instead. And so, the duo venture deeper into the urban jungle, with danger lurking around every corner, and Logan's newfound vulnerability adding an edge to their perilous journey. It's here they find the perfect hideout, a seedy, pay-by-the-hour love hotel. It's the kind of place where discretion is the name of the game, and the last spot the Yakuza would expect to find them. And while Mariko catches some sleep, Logan takes a night shift on the balcony. But as he dozes off, haunted by dreams of Jean, he's awakened by another attack. Just let it go. It's not hard to die. After defeating the thugs with the help of Mariko, Logan wakes up in a vet's office, having been stitched up by the hotel manager's son. With fresh cuts on his body, courtesy of the unconscious Wolverine, the poor kid looks like he's seen a ghost. And while Logan's healing, he's a shadow of his former invincible self. Meanwhile, Dr. Green, aka Viper, meets up with Harada, who's not too happy about her tardiness. 
But the mutant, with the ability to generate toxins and resist poison, insists that they would not have had a chance to defeat Logan without her powers. She's effectively on a mission to find Mariko and Logan, and the time is ticking. Where is Logan? I'm not done with him. The next morning, Mariko and Logan then head to Yoshida's old rundown house in Nagasaki, off the radar and steeped in history. Their time there is a mix of domestic bliss and heavy confessions. Mariko turns chef, cooking for Logan, whilst also sharing her heartache over an arranged marriage and her childhood crush on Harada. Logan, in turn, opens up about Jean, the love he lost and the heartbreak of being her executioner. A walk near the old prison camp stirs memories for Logan, but it's not all nostalgia. And that evening, their bond deepens, with them finding solace in each other's arms. But peace is short-lived, with Logan woken up by Mariko's screams as she's snatched away by the Yakuza. Shot and slowed down, he manages to yank one of the kidnappers from the car, and he's willing to do whatever it takes to get the information he needs. I need to tell you something. Take me to Noboro. Yukio soon joins him, and after extracting information, their mission becomes to confront Mariko's not-so-charming fiancé, Noburu. She also reveals that she had a vision of Logan holding his own heart, but Logan brushes it off, citing his long history of dodging death. When they find Noburu in his apartment with 304s, they force him to spill the beans and discover he's actually working with Shingen in a plot to off Mariko, all in the name of corporate inheritance, and Logan's response to this revelation, tossing him off a balcony. How did you know there's a pool down there? I did. Back in Tokyo, Mariko's homecoming to the estate is anything but warm. Shingen effectively lays out his master plan to inherit the Yoshida Corporation, but before he can complete his goal, ninjas led by Harada and Viper make quick work of his team. Viper then gives him a taste of her venomous wrath, leaving him disfigured and crazed in a callback to the bear that lost its mind at the start. When Logan and Yukio arrive, he hops into an MRI machine and uncovers the source of his healing woes, a tiny metallic parasite courtesy of Viper latched onto his heart. With Yukio's concern echoing in the background, he decides to perform some impromptu claw-assisted surgery on himself. Shingen, rabid by Viper's venom, emerges in full traditional samurai armor with a vendetta, forcing Yukio to jump into a high-octane duel. Unfortunately, while Logan succeeds in removing the robotic parasite from his chest, he then checks out, unconscious with a gaping chest wound. Though holding her own against Shingen, Yukio eventually finds herself disarmed and at his mercy. But just as he's about to deliver the final blow, Wolverine intervenes. Now fully healed, he and Shingen duel, with Shingen landing several hits, but killing Wolverine is now impossible. Logan decides to spare his life, reminding him of the shame he must live with for trying to kill his daughter. But the crazed father lunges at Logan, causing him to respond with a lethal strike to the neck. Logan, now motorcycle bound, roars towards the facility in the mountains, where a showdown ensues, with Harada's ninjas launching a volley of roped arrows and venom, causing him to eventually succumb. He wakes up in a real fix, strapped to a contraption that keeps his hands stretched out and immobile. Viper then pops in to congratulate him on his self-surgery, before revealing the massive silver samurai, built from adamantium. This hulking behemoth, courtesy of Yoshida's obsession with him, is designed to be Logan's ultimate nemesis, and he can only watch in horror as a towering samurai approaches, wielding a massive flaming sword. Luckily, Mariko runs to his aid, inadvertently causing the samurai to free Logan from his bonds. Enter Yukio, who engages in a deadly dance with Viper, and as Logan spars with a giant samurai, losing his adamantium claws in the process, in a twist of redemption, Harada takes down Viper and is killed by the samurai. This is not the way. The high-tech horror is then revealed to be Yoshida, wanting to live forever by draining Logan's life force. As Logan visibly ages, Mariko saves him by rehoming the broken claw in Yoshida's skull, putting an end to his twisted ambitions. Logan, now free and rapidly regenerating, finally finishes the job. You asked me to come say goodbye. Sayonara. In the aftermath, Yukio joins Logan at the airport, pledging herself as his bodyguard. The news is essentially buzzing with Mariko's ascension as the head of the Yoshida Corporation, and a heartfelt goodbye between Logan and her hints at a future that might have been. Two years after his high-flying samurai escapade, Logan finds himself at a security airport checkpoint when a Trask Industries commercial flickers on the TV. It barely registers with him until something extraordinary happens. He whirls around and there's Magneto, freezing Logan in place, but he's not here for a fight. Instead, he's here with Charles Xavier on a mission of peace. 
The duo explain they need his help as the fate of mutant kind hangs in the balance, setting the stage for days of future past. Why would I trust you? You wouldn't. Hello, Logan. In the Wolverine, a resilient Logan finds himself burdened by a vow of non-violence that he can no longer keep. The reunion with Yoshida plunges him into a complex narrative entwining family turmoil, political intrigue, and the criminal underworld, all while his once reliable healing abilities are mysteriously compromised. The film predominantly unfolds in Japan, and this choice pays off beautifully. The striking locations and settings blend seamlessly with the storyline, enhanced by a dynamic cast of characters. Hugh Jackman reprises his iconic role with a performance that balances brute strength and vulnerability, with his ability to convey both rage and pain central to the film's emotional depth. He portrays Logan's internal struggles and physicality with equal conviction, capturing the character's journey from a haunted loner to a hero grappling with his mortality. A lot of people have tried to kill me and I'm still here. But you're different now. Rila Fukushima delivers a breakthrough performance as the enigmatic Yukio. She brings a blend of playfulness and intensity to her character, showcasing impressive fighting skills and a strong on-screen presence. Her chemistry with Jackman adds a compelling dynamic to their scenes together, making Yukio a memorable and charismatic character. We are almost there. So you can see the future. I can read a map. In her debut film, Tao Akumato portrays Mariko with a quiet strength and grace, effectively communicating the character's inner conflict between familial duty and personal freedom. And her subtle performance provides a counterbalance to the more intense characters like Wolverine, while her developing relationship with Logan adds a nuanced layer to the film. Kuzuri fears nothing. My grandfather said Kuzuri would protect me too. The seasoned Huruyuki Sanada brings gravitas to the role of Shingen. He convincingly portrays the character's ambition and ruthlessness, making him a formidable antagonist. And his sword fighting scenes are particularly amazing, showcasing the character's physical prowess and intensity. <laughs> Svetlana Kodchenkova's portrayal of Viper is both seductive and menacing. She exudes a cold and calculated presence, making her a credible threat to Logan. Her performance is marked by certain theatricality, but it does often veer into campy making her stick out like a sore thumb. His flesh is weak now. I did that. Wu Yan Li delivers a solid performance as Harada, effectively portraying the character's conflicted loyalty. His mastery of physical combat is evident in his action scenes, adding authenticity to his portrayal as a skilled archer. In a dual role, Hal Yamanuchi brings an imposing presence to the role of the Silver Samurai, and also portrays the elderly Yoshida with a sense of gravitas and conniving complexity. Though his screen time is limited, he manages to convey the character's power, while also capturing Yoshida's desperation and determination in his quest for immortality. A man can run out of things to live for. A life without end can have no meaning. It is the only life that can. While Brian T effectively plays the sleazy, opportunistic Noburu, embodying the character's cowardice and corruption, making him an easily dislikable figure in the story. Get out. The characters all thrive within a sharp, engaging script that effectively harnessed Jackman's skill in depicting Logan's tormented yet volatile nature. Mangold deserves praise for his special touches, even if his handheld camera work sometimes becomes disorienting. He endows the film with a distinct visual flair, and the action, a crucial element of Wolverine's world, is well executed, with a particularly memorable chase through the streets of Tokyo and a bullet train. However, there's a palpable sense that Mangold is holding back, likely due to the studio's desire for a PG-13 rating. Despite this, The Wolverine remains an enjoyable and compelling addition to the franchise, and emerges as one of the highlights of 2013. At its core, The Wolverine shines brightest when it focuses on Logan's internal struggles, skillfully navigating his emotional turmoil. This introspective approach not only enriched the character of Logan, but also served to reconnect franchise fans with the contemporary narrative arc of the X-Men universe. It hasn't been easy for you living without time. You are offering to kill me. No, not right away. With that said, that's all for today, folks. A huge thanks to everyone that requested we cover The Wolverine. I do apologize for my voice, I'm a bit sick at the moment, but wanted to ensure I got this video out before the weekend. And I hope that you guys are enjoying the start of the new year. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and if there's anything else you'd like for me to cover, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Can you stay? That's what you wanted. Not anymore. 
I love you, Jean. I always will. Stay. I can't, Princess. I'm a soldier, and I've been hiding too long.